In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new GMK Tech AD GP1 external GPU docking station. And this thing is coming in with a super small form factor. Actually, one of the smallest ones that we've seen on the market so far. And this does support Oculink and USB 4. So with USB 4, we can go with Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. Very compact design here. Round back, we've got tons of I.O. and it does support 100 watt PD charging out of USB Type-C. So if you do pair this up with a handheld, you can keep it charged or even a mini PC that supports single cable operation mode will work with this unit. Recently on the channel, we took a look at GMK Tech's new Evo X1 mini PC powered by the Ryzen AI9 HX370 and all by itself, it's a great performer. We've got 12 cores, 24 threads and the Radeon 890mi GPU but they also added Oculink to this unit. So that's exactly what we're gonna be pairing this new eGPU up with. And we're gonna just be testing Oculink here because it is a much faster connection. 64 gigs as opposed to 40 using USB 4, and we can definitely get better performance out of it that way. Inside of the box, obviously you're gonna get the eGPU itself. It also comes with a USB 4 cable, Oculink cable, and a 240 watt power supply. The GPU itself can pull a maximum of 120 watts, but we did need a little extra for that 100 watt PD charging over USB Type-C. Taking a look at the overall unit up front, not much going on here, but we do have an LED indicator letting us know that it's powered on and connected correctly. Over on the right hand side, our exhaust vent for the built-in heat sink. And around back, when it comes to I.O., we've got our power input, USB 4, Oculink, two full-size HDMI ports, and two full-size display ports. I've done a little bit of testing so far, and it looks like both Oculink and USB 4 do support PCIe X4 4.0, but keep in mind, Oculink will be much faster than USB 4 no matter what. And when it comes to the overall specs of the GMK Tech AD GP1, we've got the AMD Radeon 7600 MXT, and we've seen several of these hit the market in the last two years, or year and a half at least, but this is coming in with a very small form factor. It'll fit in a bag, but then again, you've also got that power supply that you need to lug around with you. It's got eight gigabytes of VRAM, a core clock of 2300 megahertz, 32 compute units, 2048 stream processors, and 32 RT cores. Again, it supports that Oculink and USB 4, plus 100 watt charging out. Setting this thing up with the Evo X1 was a breeze. I had already updated the driver on the iGPU here, and as soon as I plugged this in over Oculink up front, it just detected it as that RX 7600 MX team. We could start using it right now. Moving in just a bit closer, as you can see, we've got that HX370, 32 gigs of LP DDR5 running at 7500 megahertz, and of course, the 7600 MXT with eight gigs of VRAM. And with the AD GP1, we can get full power out of this GPU. So it's actually right there at 120 watts. And I'll show you here from Furmark. I've got Afterburner running in the top left hand corner. And as soon as we stress this out, we're putting a 100% load on that GPU, 99%. You can see we're steady at 120 watts. So we can see those maximum clocks on this 7600 MXT. And by the way, with the HX370 here, I've got the Evo X1 in performance mode from the BIOS. So we can do a maximum TDP on the CPU up to 64 watts, given a stellar performance from that Zen 5 based 12 core 24 thread CPU. I will swap over to my game capture in just a bit so we can get a better look at everything, but I did want to throw Spider-Man 2 on. I was actually really interested to see how this performs with an eGPU. The original Spider-Man remastered that was released for PC, even Oculink when it was first released, didn't perform well at all. But as you can see here, the game is running pretty smooth. We're at 1080p high settings and I'm not using any FSR right now. If you wanted to use frame gen, you always could. It's built into the game. Uh, FSR frame gen 3.1, I believe here. So you could really up that frame rate. But personally, I wanted to see how it handled it at a native 1080 and it's not bad at all. Now it's time to check out some GPU benchmarks. And the first one we have here is 3D Mark Night Rain. With the eGPU attached, we came in with a total score of 57,181. To give you an idea, just on the 890M iGPU, we scored a 33,958, which isn't bad for integrated graphics, but as you can see, I mean, we've got a massive hike here with the synthetic benchmark. I also ran Fire Strike with the GPU connected. We got a total score of 25,730. Just on the iGPU, 9,370. 
And finally, we've got Time Spy with a pretty impressive 9,818. And just on the iGPU, this 890M can do over 4,000, which is great, but obviously with the 7600 MXT connected over Oculink, we should see a real nice hike in frame rates, even at higher resolutions. There were a few games that I wanted to test at 1440p, more notably easier to run games, because I've got a good feeling what's going to run at 1440 on this card and what's not. Forza Horizon 5 is one of those that we can go up to Ultra 1440, no FSR, no cast, and this game runs amazingly on the 7600 MXT over Oculink. Next on the list, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1080 Ultra, FSR set to balanced. And I actually thought we'd see a little more out of this. Now, I completely understand we could take FSR to performance if we want to. We've also got FSR 3 frame gen. And this game will do 1440p, well over 60, once it's set up like that. But at a native 1080, I did need to add some FSR here. Doom Eternal, still a lot of fun to play. We can go up to 1440p Nightmare, and I tried Ultra Nightmare. It really does dip it on down. I still think we could get over 60 with it, but it looks great at the Nightmare preset 1440p on this little setup. And that 7600 MXT is trucking right along. We're seeing averages over 120 FPS. Marvel Rivals, still in early access, and this has really been hit or miss on a bunch of different GPUs, iGPUs, dedicated stuff. With this setup here, I'm at 1080 Ultra, no FSR. Seeing averages in the low 90s. And the final one we have here is God of War Ragnarok, just a really great port from PlayStation over the PC. Uh, a lot of systems are going to run this really well. We're at 1080 high, FSR set to quality, and we're getting an average of 76 FPS. I mean, this is more than playable. And if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see we've basically maxed out the 7600 MXT. We're up to 98, 99% on GPU utilization. Our CPU is actually not utilizing much at all with that HX370. Just kind of goes to show how powerful that CPU itself really is. Overall, the GMK Tech AD GP1 does perform really well. I mean, it's on par with other eGPUs using the same Radeon RX 7600 MXT, and we've seen a bunch of them. But again, this is coming in in a very compact form factor, so you can slip this right in a bag. Now, you've still got that power supply you need to deal with, which almost comes in as big as the unit itself. But if you use a handheld or laptop without a dedicated GPU while you're on the go and you want a little more once you get to the house, this could be a good choice for you. I might have one more video coming up with this eGPU. I'd love to test this with something like the ROG Ally X over USB 4. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit that like button and think about subscribing. But that's going to wrap it up for our first look here. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links to their official website. And like always, Thanks for watching.